Hey guys, we're back again. Uh, doing a little bit more work on the Mirage. Uh, now that it's finally back in the garage, I can start working on the all-wheel drive conversion. And uh, that's what I've been doing this past weekend. Um, just uh, started working on stripping it down and getting everything out of the rear end here for uh, the floor pan conversion. So uh, it's getting there. Got a lot, got a lot left to remove still. Uh, lots of frozen bolts on this that have never been out uh, since the car was new, probably. So uh, working on getting all that apart, but it's uh, it's coming along pretty nicely. So uh, car is super dirty from sitting outside for forever, but uh, it's getting there. So. Uh, um, Got the entire interior stripped pretty much. Uh, the dash and everything can stay uh, because we'll just cover it up with a blanket, but everything else pretty much had to come out. Um. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, it's coming along. Uh, I still need to remove a couple of little things like uh, the seat belt brackets there and the e brake assembly, but I have to finish getting the arms off for that. Uh, got the uh, fuel tank out Sunday, um, which was a big step. And uh, yeah, pretty much all that's left is uh, getting the getting the rear suspension off, and uh, we can start drilling drilling spot welds on the floor. So um, I think it's going to be a fairly easy conversion. Uh, there's a few trouble spots that I need to deal with at the same time. Um, nothing too, too major, but uh, uh, I don't think this is going to be a quick conversion either by any means. So, um, got to fix this here. So it's uh, a little bit of rot here, but this should be easy. It's just a flat piece of metal, so we'll just cut it out and put a patch there. Um, Let's see. I think more or less there, there's really not a whole lot of rust that's going to be causing trouble with for the floor pan swap. There's a couple little problem areas. Uh, up here in the front corner, I noticed the carpet's been getting wet. I think there's a rot in there. I think it's rotted through there, um, but just in that spot. So. That should be easy to fix uh, down the road. Actually, uh, I was getting a lot of trouble with uh, the carpet being wet here in the passenger footwell. And what, we ended, or what I ended up figuring out that it was, was these caps are just loose. Um, most of them are rock solid, but those ones um, were pretty loose in there and they were just letting water in. So thankfully that's not actually a rust issue. But for the most part, I mean, this car is pretty clean. Um, it's got its little spots, but it doesn't have a ton of surface rust. So uh, just localized sections of rot. Uh, more or less, that'll be easy to fix. There's another spot there that'll have to be fixed. But uh, that seam there is actually where the floor uh, will be drilled out. So that's another spot that we'll fix at the same time as doing the floor pan swap. But that uh, seam of uh, seam sealer there, if you follow it around here and around the bottom of the strut tower there, then it kind of comes around here and then uh, right here, this seal across the front, that's it, that's what will be replaced is all around, all around here and uh, that whole, that whole section all the way up to, this is where the front of the back seat sits. So all of that is what gets replaced in this conversion. Uh, basically, we'll be doing a lot of uh, rust repairs at the same time as doing the floor. But this car is pretty solid, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal to get all of that done. And uh, I think it's going to be a pretty nice, pretty nice ride when it's all finished. The, but uh, you can you can kind of see how bad the car actually was. Um, some people had commented that that the car for being in the rust belt looks pretty rust free. Well, it looks that way. It, it's not actually entirely the case. Um, 
like for instance pulling the evap system um, this was the bracket that that it hung on and it was more or less gone and you can see where it mounted here this this is multiple layers and this is the back layer this right here where you're seeing paint is actually this well it's a it's an inside layer it's not this outside layer here but uh, it's an inside layer it's separate from this layer so this uh, probably probably fix while the car is apart um, creeper here you can see the actual pan is pretty bad I mean this this here is an actual hole this is a hole uh, that I've got RTV'd inside to keep water out of the trunk but the pan is just the rails are more or less gone uh, right here is the camber arm uh, that lets you adjust the camber on the rear trailing arms these more or less don't do anything anymore um, was, even though the car is in alignment it was uh, getting really really bad camber wear and I discovered that these cups, or the mounts that these arms go to, are more or less just hanging in here. Um, they're still attached, but the so many layers are gone that it just, the whole, the whole rail flexes. And uh, more or less uh, doesn't do anything. So uh, that's the reason uh, I had another guy on the forum ask why I wasn't just replacing uh, the sections needed for the all-wheel drive, removing this and whatnot, and just changing out part of the floor. And why I was changing the whole floor out, this is why. I mean, it's pretty bad. Now, thankfully, uh, the front of the car, if you can see it, actually is not too terrible. Uh, most of the rot is localized to this rear section of the car. The front and I don't know why it's like this, but right about where that seam is, where the trunk pan ends, um, really is where the rot stops. There's not a whole lot up past that. And all of this back here is replaced by with the floor pan swap. Um, I mean, it starts here and follows this line around um, up here, this top part. And it goes around pretty much all the way to the front. And that side, that bar that goes across there, is where the front of the floor pan ends. So all of these frame rails here, all of these mounts, everything pretty much gets replaced uh, where there's rust. So uh, I think more or less it'll be pretty solid uh, once it's done. And uh, even though it looks really, really bad under here, uh, because all this is getting replaced, it's it's actually not going to be too bad. Like some people would say, well, why are you doing this to this car? Why not get a cleaner car from California or something? It's just not necessary. Uh, where the rust is on the car is getting replaced. So more or less, it'll be fairly rust free. I mean, it's got some spots of rot in the front that I need to fix, but nothing nothing really major like it is back here. So that's good. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, hoping that this whole swap will only take a month or two. Probably more towards the two than one, but uh, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be too bad. Uh, this coming weekend, I'm hoping to get the rest of this suspension out. These bolts are just totally frozen in. I've been soaking them with PB Blaster, as well as these and um, those front ones there on the trailing arms. And uh, hopefully I can get those apart this weekend and uh, even start cutting the stock floor out. And uh, if I can do that, that'll be pretty good. Uh, still have to figure out what I'm going to do about the EVAP system. That's a really, really heavy part of the car. Um, and on the older EVO 4 or EVO 5 fuel tank that I have, um, none, of the, none of the vents are there like they are on the uh, Mirage, Mirage tank. This is the fuel pump hanger, this is the sending unit, and I have this vent, but I only have one of these, and there are two of them on the Mirage tank, and I don't, I don't have this vent at all on the uh, Evo tank. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about the EVAB system. I've got the older uh, 97 Mirage slash Evo 456 EVAP canister here, and I may just switch to this or I may just remove it entirely because we don't have emissions testing here. 
and that would eliminate a lot of weight. So um, we'll we'll see. I mean, this isn't exactly a street car at this point, so not having an EVAP system is not really going to be a big deal. But uh, I have yet to make up my mind on that. But basically, uh, once the rear end is in place, um, more or less, that's it. I can uh, swap swap an Evo motor and transmission in. Uh, I have to get a custom drive shaft made. Um, I think the coupe had one of the drive shaft hangers. The Evo has got two drive shaft hangers, but uh, I'm not probably going to use them. I'm probably going to get a one-piece drive shaft made for this car, so that'll uh, eliminate the need for that. Yeah, I don't see one up there, so I don't think the coupe has the the drive shaft. Well, maybe it does. Maybe it does right where that exhaust hanger is at. Can't tell, but it looks like it looks like it might uh, might be there. But again, I'm not sure if I'll use it, so uh, we'll see. Um, but I'm working on a couple of things uh, all at the same time on this car. So along with the rear end conversion, it's getting a uh, built fuel system, uh, Evo 5 fuel tank sitting underneath half of my interior there. But uh, I'm going to be running, what I've come up with for this is, this is the fuel pump hanger and it has a sending unit on it. And then over here you've got the siphon part and it also has a sending unit right here and these two things are the same size so what I did is I bought a second one of these and I'm gonna mount it over here I'm gonna eliminate this hard line and eliminate these hard lines and I'm gonna do a in pass-through fittings here uh, this hose is basically 5 16 so I've got a dash 6 to 5 16 barb adapter uh, for each one of these and I'm gonna run two Wolver 255s one on each side of the tank um, and then they're going to meet at a dual dash six to single dash eight. Um, and then it's going to be a dash eight hard line all the way up to the front, um, which is going to feed the, uh, the built two, three stroker. So, uh, that's going to be it for that. That also eliminates the need for the Venturi valve, which is nice, uh, because the return is going to be a custom dash six. Uh, or I may even use the stock feed line as the return. I haven't decided yet. But um, basically, if I've got a pump on each side pulling from both sides of the tank, then I don't have to worry about one side uh, pulling more than the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, probably dash four, or dash six return to two dash fours, and then have a T fitting, and then. Uh, send the same amount of fuel to each side of the tank on the return. Uh, so that should eliminate the need for the complex Venturi valve and uh, I think that'll that'll simplify the fuel system a lot and two Walber 255s uh, should be enough fuel flow for around eight or nine hundred horsepower uh, which I'm not going to be running that much power so that should be good. Um, yeah so that's the fuel system. At the same time uh, the plan is to get uh, an NHRA legal battery box and run an external cutoff out here somewhere, uh, maybe on here or something like that. I haven't decided yet. I want it to look clean. Um, I don't want it to just be like, oh, this is where I put it because I was in a hurry. I want it to, to kind of flow with the, with the car. So I haven't figured out exactly where I'm going to put it yet, but uh, I want everything to be NHRA legal so I can run this car on the strip. And uh, yeah, that also having, uh, well, the plan is to put a battery box back here, probably run an Optima yellow top. And with the battery in the trunk, um, I can run... Um, custom wiring for the for the fuel pumps which will be nice and I won't have to run it all the way from the front. If you can see the red wire up there uh, that's STM's rewire kit. I'm going to buy a second one of those and instead of running it from the front all the way to the back uh, I'll just run two short links uh, so that each fuel pump has its own dedicated wiring back here and uh, that will free up some room in the bay and uh, get rid of this, this battery, battery mount here. Uh, which was, it's been a pretty good battery mount, but I just, it's not, 
really what I want for the car. So um, I'll probably just, like I said, I'll probably just eliminate that completely and uh, mount the battery in the trunk. So uh, that's more or less what I've got going on right now. Uh, I haven't decided what I'm going to do about the engine for uh, temporary use. Um, I can get an Eclipse 2.4 liter uh, four cylinder, which is the 4G64, and it will mount straight in with my old Evo clutch and Evo transmission that I've got laying around, and I can run the car and all will drive that way uh, because of the 1.8 harness. Uh, will work with that motor and all I have to do is a couple tweaks to the ECU to be able to run the 4G64 So I may pick up a 4G64 just for the time being to get the all-wheel drive system running uh, Or if, if this uh, floor pan swap ends too late in the year then I'm I'm planning to build the motor this this uh, winter so I might just wait but uh, that'd be a lot of wiring to figure out all at the same time So I haven't decided on that yet, but um, we'll figure that out when it gets a little closer. Right now, my uh, complete focus is on getting this floor pan changed out. So, uh, if I can get started drilling on it this weekend, I'll be pretty happy with that. It really shouldn't take a whole lot of time to get the floor pan out once it's, the car is stripped down to it. And uh, once we get that far, we'll be in pretty good shape. And we only have a handful of rust repairs that need to be taken care of before the new pan can go in. Um, doing all the spot welds should only take uh, two or three days. And we'll seam sealer it. I'm planning to probably paint the trunk with uh, old school speckle paint. Just because I, I'm kind of a muscle car guy at the same time. I have a lot of car interests. I just think it would be kind of neat to have a, a speckle paint truck or trunk. Excuse me in an Evo, so probably do that. Um, yeah, a lot going on all at the same time on this this car, so we'll see how it turns out, but uh, stay tuned, and uh, hope you're as excited as I am to finally, uh, finally be starting on the all-wheel drive conversion. So take it easy, guys, and we'll see you next time.